So as Lily has mentioned, I'm Nicola and I'm running um, in the elections. So as I said, it's been a, a learning curve and a learning experience. Um, and my talk today is on women and poverty. Uh, research paper after research paper confirms that the gap between the rich and the poor is continues to widen at an alarming rate. Poverty levels are rising all the time. For many people, poverty used to be a remote and removed issue. Now we confront it on a daily basis, and as Pastor Tony said, it just doesn't seem to be getting any better at this stage. Um, if anything, it's since the pandemic, it's getting a lot worse. We see evidence in the street. We see people even in employment depend more and more on food banks to get through the week. Coos of shoppers waiting on best, best before products uh, being marked out in the supermarket is an everyday occurrence. Poverty is talked about a lot more than it used to be. People are more familiar with its effects and consequences, although less understand the actual root causes of the poverty. But there's an interesting fact about poverty. When it's talked about, it's nearly always referred to in gender neutral terms. So it's phrases like households or parents, um, or even just percentages, which we understand a lot of people don't like percentages, but it's also it's always referred to as that. It's never as the people. Uh, so Whereas it's mostly women who actually suffer many of the worst impacts of poverty and economic equality. And the reason for that tends to be women in positions in society, in homes and in the workplace. So there are five statistics to help illustrate this point. Uh, women make up 82% of all part-time workers and 52% of women are unemployed. Having one or more children reduces a woman's likelihood of being in a permanent full-time job by almost one third. Only 45% of women with dependent children are working in permanent full-time jobs. Women are more likely than men to be forced out of the labour market by under, unpaid domestic work, underpaid, sorry, domestic work or caring responsibilities. 69% of carers in Northern Ireland are women, and men have borne just 14% of the total burden of recent welfare cuts, compared with 86% for women. In Northern Ireland, 91.2% of single parent households were headed by women. Single parent households lost proportionately more than their, of their income compared to other households as a result of austerity measures. This further compounds the inequality exp experienced by women. Many women in Northern Ireland are engaged in low paid work. Very few have a pay increase in recent years. A large number of women are employed in low skilled jobs insecure and precarious employment and many have experienced cuts in working hours and cuts in benefits while household expenditure still continues to rise and is only set to get worse in the future. In sectors such as social care, retail, catering, cleaning and hospitality, many women are employed in circumstances where low pay and lack of job security is now the norm. Many women are forced to double job and many have current responsibilities within the home and the wider family circle. As we all know, it's generally the woman that looks after the parents as well as run the household and do the job. Currently, the delivery of care at home to the elderly, the sick, and those with other, with other forms of disability is predominantly carried out by women. It is frequently unpaid, underpaid, and undervalued. Women are disproportionately in the least secure and the lowest paid jobs, and they carry out the most of the unpaid care work. In rural Ireland, women are outliving outliving men in a population which is living longer. There is, however, no infrastructure to accommodate this development. In rural areas where incomes have plummeted and poverty rates worsened as a result of decline in the farming and the construction industry, many women have taken on extra work, often in low-paid, low part-time jobs. Additionally, women are being faced with a dangerous erosion in the quality and security of jobs. Aggressive ca casualisation and lack of affordability accessible childcare are pushing more women workers into low pay and insecure part-time work. That overview barely scratches the surface of women and poverty. I've heard the situation being described as the poverty iceberg, with what we see on the surface is only a fraction of the entire problem. For working class women, their daily routine is a struggle against the inequalities and oppression visited on them by the capitalist system. Poverty may be just one manifestation, but its effects are perverse and they can be lifelong, life-limiting, and severely damaging. Much more is needed to be done to understand the full impacts of poverty on working class women. I would urge the party to explore research links with academics, authors, 
and women's groups to undertake a comprehensive assessment of women and poverty in Northern Ireland. And I look forward to presenting the findings at a future conference. Thank you.